Hey everybody, Stu Smith here with another Tactical Fitness Report, and Jeff Nichols and I are together again, and we are going to discuss some of the evolution of the gear that we use to train then and now, um, not only from a military gear that you get issued, how that has changed over the years, but also um, just our pre-military training gear. Uh, you know, that we use from running shoes and, you know, other garments uh, yep. that we can go. So Jeff, good to see you again, buddy. I uh, appreciate it. <laughs> it's good to, good to be back. Yeah. Like I, I look at this and we just, we look at like generations, right. And it's you know, like, not just the stuff we were issued at buds, um, but and it's things have changed. Like there's things that have been issued at buds now that obviously we haven't necessarily used in that environment, like the current boots, for example, but we still have them, but it's interesting to see kind of how things, have changed. I think like when you and I were kids, for example, like the variety of like baseball cleats that we had as children, like you had like three kind, three pair. Now you have like entire oh. business or entire like apparel companies that are targeting children. Right. Countless. So like yeah. the same way you got swimming gear and all these sort of things that like, there's been an improvement in a lot of these things that like, and that's the idea is you're going to get issued what you get issued. Right. And there's an evolution of some of that gear, but like, what training gear is available to you now that makes training better, right? Well, all right, let's let's do that. Let's start from the feet up, right? And uh, we'll we'll play around in different domains as well, land and water. Um, so boots. Uh, you know, back in my day, Jeff, dating myself a little bit, we had the old Vietnam era jungle boot. That you know, the term breaking in a pair of boots really mattered. Yep. to that nowadays you know they have actually gone through two different evolutions since then they use the baits for another 15 20 years uh now they're using the nike combat gen 2 and these latest models really don't need a lot of breaking in i mean they yeah. are literally air boots yeah you know, they are just so light you know they're they're great running boots you know the older boots you know that that I played in, and then I think we had to have airborne jump boots. You know, those things were like pure yep, leather yeah. and heavy. You know, those things were the steel toed. Yeah. Yeah. Like brutal. Steel toed. It was like, yeah. You know, those <laughs> were not fun running boots. No. Um, and you had to break them in, right? And you had to shine them. But yes, you know, so there's, there's a whole list of things that you have to still have to shine them. Um, but what, what is your take on that evolution? And do you think that it's been better, you know, with fewer, injuries resulting from better footwear yeah i think it's, it's it's a couple things you know like it's i think certainly foot health has probably improved because you have a little more forgiving boot um i think though the problem that like really just goes to boots right that's why like i and i don't, I don't think you would either you, you don't recommend your guys running in boots is you know like you want them to experience the boot but from a training standpoint the boots aren't great now but given the environment of selection, like it's not, it's not military feasible and it's not feasible either to wear tennis shoes in the sand. So the, uh, from what I can see with the Nike boots, they're great. It's just the boot. Like when you look at a boot with a boot, right? The, the ankle is kind of forward lean to it, right? For that, for load carriage. Well, anything that puts your ankle in an already plantar flex or dorsiflex position, it may limit it. So that just becomes the, like, how do you lace it? That's a whole other sort of topic, but you know, like I think certainly boots, you know, if you made a boot, let me just start with this. If you made a boot that was like the best, highest performing boot for sand, it'd be so limiting. You wouldn't be able to use it really anywhere else. Probably. <laughs> that is true. You know, true. like, yeah, it's like if you had this really amazing, perfect running boot, it would be a shoe, <laughs> you know? <laughs> and, and so yeah, that's, that's the, but, but given what, like, given the stress of the environment now like those boots are lasting and you know and um if guys have good training go in like the the boots certainly going to be better than what we experienced although we had to do the jungle boots too in third phase and i'll say once they're broken in they're pretty amazing honestly so yeah they're, they're it's kind of like um when i i interviewed a a lady that's a runner that runs a running store and there's different types of shoes too there's like a stability shoe you know, there's a more neutral shoe that, you know, doesn't require, depending on how you pronate or supinate. Um, 
you know, so I would say the older boots are definitely a stability boot. You know, yeah. they're really all about, you know, load bearing and ankle protection. Um, I, I don't think there's ever been a bud student with worse ankles than myself. I probably had 10 ankle sprains in both ankles before I went into buds between football and rugby and yeah, just yeah. accidents. But I never sprained my ankle again when I was going through buds. And yeah. you know, the only time I did was when I was wearing running shoes, you know, running in a place where I probably shouldn't have been running in shoes, like on a trail or something. So but we do run in boots here, uh, but it's usually on the sand and it's on trails that we run, yeah. you know, just, just for stability, you know, and ankle protection. Cause yeah. uh, unfortunately, you know, you see people running and, you know, especially if it's a thicker running shoe and you're running on a, you know, a trail yeah, with stability is wonky. Yeah. Oh my God. That's, like, that's been the evolution yeah. of footwear now. Cause that's what you see is like, if you, if you can recall, or even just start thinking, maybe you even thought about this is like, look at the NBA. No, no one really wears high tops anymore. Right. And look at the NFL, same thing, unless you're a lineman, because we know now that it's the same idea. I remember 10 years ago, you go into home Depot and everyone's wearing a belt. Now mm. no one's wearing a belt yeah. it's because the class auction lawsuit was filed against Home Depot years back. All the employees saying, hey, this is contributing to more back pain because yeah. like, they weaker. were forward. They had to wear the belt. That was mandatory for Home Depot. Now they don't wear them because you start eliminating those some of those stability, stabilizing muscles. And so that's the thing is like you want to learn how to lace a boot at the foot, but not at the ankle too tight because you start limiting that ankle. You're going to create a lot of more issues, um, typically, especially in, in an unbalanced situation. But so that's the trade-off is like we do, it will provide some ankle protection or security, although it will limit stability and mobility a bit, but that's where good training comes in. If you have good training, resistance training, the boot is just a tool. Sure. You know, sure. it's just, it's just a better tool than it once was probably. I think we can say that we can agree. And that's like the same thing with fins, right? That evolution right there. Same idea. You know, yeah. like the duck feet to the rocket fins and what we like to train in. And we record, we where I recommend people to try is the TYR fins, really good footbed, but a very forgiving fin. Yeah. And as much spinning as the guys are going to do, it's like, well, we have, like, I love the duck feet, but if you've got the legs for them, the feet for them, same with the rocket fins, if you've got the legs and feet for them. Um, but I, it's like, I was looking like, it's like barefoot running. It's like, I didn't start off there. You got to work yourself into it. And I think fins are that same way. And now that there are different training fins, we can, that's the evolution is it's not just like one yeah. super hard vulcanized rubber fin that just, yeah, that's, a, that's a really you. good, that's a really good point because you can use these smaller fins, even slip on fins is what, what we use too. Um, you know, to progress up to the bigger yep. scuba fin that requires more leg strength. Yep. you know, in hip strength, um, yep. you know, to make those move. And if you come from a, a lifting background, most of those guys may not be very good at swimming a 500 yard swim without fins, but then they put on a big pair of scuba fins. I don't know if you noticed this in your buds class, but like the guys that like football players that really kind of sucked at 500 yard swim, you know, oh, on their first, first day yeah. of buds, they're at the front of the class, you know, when they put on yep. the big scuba fins, I was like, damn, Big old yep. muscle legs. Yeah, yeah. Um, so that, that was impressive to see. So, yeah, I think with any of these, you know, footwear, let, let's go shoes and, and fins, um, you know, a progression into what you're going to do is the wise move. You know, you don't yeah. want to jump right into running in boots. Agreed. You know, 100% of the time. You know, I, I would say, you know, if, you know, for my guys, we might run in boots. 30, 40% of the time. And it's usually related to the terrain that we're running on. Otherwise, yeah. you know, like today was a hill day, which is all pavement. Just run in yeah, a regular bet. shoe like this. I love yeah, these big things. Fan. Yeah. These so things like talk great. about evolution for a heavier guy like you and I, right? 200 ish pounds. Yep. They can, they can, they can cover some decent mileage because we have endurance. The ONs have been, have been the most stable running shoe. I, I haven't got the ultras yet. I haven't tried the ultras yet or ultras, I think, 
Yeah. But uh, again, that's the evolutions because that goes to the next thing is like you, you start seeing if you compare the jungle boot with the new Nike Gen 2, you see a much you see a much for more forgiving ankle flexion point. Sure. Right. And that's the thing, too, is with, with those shoes, you bet. Right. And that's yeah. the thing with the ONs is like what we know now is like when that foot hits the ground. Right. The toes have got to splay out. Right. And that creates the arch. Right. But if the toes don't splay out, we get into pronation supination. We create a lot of heel impact like that. That bottom of that heel and Achilles are getting really tired because that foot can't spread out. So it it actually concaves it. it, Your toe and heel collapse towards each other. So, yeah. You know, another indicator on that. Like that. And I'm saying you have a good forefoot like the ON. It's great. It's fantastic. You know, another good indicator on whether or not you need to refit your shoes is if you get toe blisters, right? If you get a lot of toe blisters in between your toes, you know, your toes are rubbing. I mean, that's why they're not, they're not able to spread out a little bit. So watch that. And sometimes that pinky toe and the one right next to it, you know, a lot of, I see a lot of people get blisters. I'm like, you need a wider foot. Yeah. You know, and also shoes. too guys like one of the things that i found out too is like i didn't really think about it it's like i started filling with socks like i was wearing and i like them i really like the brand darn tough and smart wool it's just with the nylon man like they can get real tight and they can bunch the toes yeah. even more and like when you start drying in the in the dryer your nylon more and more they get stiffer and stiffer and you lose that that elasticity so I, and it is a weird, it's a natural thing to want to like get some t- tight fitting socks to eliminate friction. It's actually quite the opposite. We don't want the sock sliding, right? But we also don't want it to smash your toes, which mm-hmm. I've kind of, I've gone to the finger toe socks now and they're kind of a pain in the butt to get on, but I, I don't see myself going away from them. Like I just, oh. for that reason, like they don't, when my feet get tired, they still will slide now. It's nice. Yeah. Like, cause when I get tired, I, I tend to ball my toes up and hold, holding the shoe. And now I don't as much. So it's an experiment and that just goes to evolution. Right. And I, I think the better, the better, the footwear we have too, the better, the better, the training impact we have with fins as well. Sure. A good, and a good tight fit. I think it too is like a fin that's really tight in the foot forefoot yeah. guys also. Yeah. So it's like, if you have an in-between fin, don't size down, like stay in between up, like, and get some neoprene socks. Yep. They're way better. So that's kind of like, yep. instead of a really thick booty too, which yeah. can also constrict you. You betcha. Yeah. So that's kind of been the evolution. I think that like, you know, like it's good. If you have the jet fins or rocket, great. But I really would encourage you on the training side, pick another sort of swim fin because you can, um, it's just, it's like, what's the difference between flat bench press and decline? Well, they're kind of the same, but they really do provide a good additional stimulus. Sure. Um, so it's a good, I think the variety is good. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I, I swam in um, Mars power planer yep. um, before I went to Bud's because you know, I didn't have duck feet or, um, well, in fact, that's all they issued back then were, were the old duck feet and you couldn't buy them anywhere. I mean, there, there was like, they made them for, they made them for butts you know, like yeah. the, 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 that company went out of business and now they go with the um what do you call it uh rocket, rocket fins i think yeah. they may have some jet fins mixed in there if if you were to ask me which one's better i would i prefer the jet fin over the rocket fin just because they are a lot more pliable than the rocket fin i mean you really have to get in there and break yep. those rocket fins in if you want to no, not feel like you're swimming with like wood tied to your feet. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I, I tend to prefer the the jet fin versus the, and I think they're made by two different companies. One's Aqua Lung, which is the jet fin, and the other one is what's the other big? Is, scuba? It, is it Mars? Or no, is it it's, it's like Scuba. It's like uh, the Scuba big, Pro. Yeah, scuba, scuba Pro. Pro. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's who it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. You can't go wrong with either, but again, like that, the limiting factor of that fin is the booty. Yeah. Because you don't, if your heel, if your heel is not inside of the shoe and boot, you, when you push your toe down, your, 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 your hamstring doesn't fire as well because mm. the heel is not stable. So 
Like that's always been that. That is why I want guys training in a full slip on because the heel is the key for the for the glute. As soon as you remove that 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 position of that that part of the heel, where that fin doesn't is it sloppy? Real that there's a lot of give in there, and the the glutes don't fire as well. So that 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 that, yeah, that you know again, that's a, it's, but that's a dive fin though. So that's the thing is the rocket and jet fin. If you're submerged, you're not kicking as hard as you can like you would on the surface. So it's no. kind of that's why I want guys training in a swim fin, and then when you get to selection. You got the dive in, right? That, that it is what it is. So, yeah. Um, yeah. So, uh, that's a really that. good point. Um, Cause when, you know, I don't have a huge foot. I think I have a size 11, but my duck foot size was super extra large. They yeah. didn't get any bigger than that. Yeah. But I had a booty that was decent. And whenever I, my foot was in there, it wasn't all crammed up like that, but I had enough room in there and it covered my whole foot. Yeah, or, yeah. Or, and it didn't rub against my, you know, ankle issue. Yep. You know, so it wasn't, yeah, yeah. wasn't too big. It was just right. It wasn't like half my toes or, you know, yeah. half my foot sticking out of the fin. It wasn't like that, which you lose a lot of yeah. uh, torque. I was lucky. You do that. Mine fit. Mine was real lucky. I, I, I fit real well into the fins. I, I didn't, you know, like it was, it was tough on the feet, like getting used to it. But, um, you know, I, I, in hindsight, I look at it and go like, I, I think that because we had to swim, like our whole class, like we were like, cause we were in a book, they kind of made us very, like everyone had to wear UDT and they kind of, they kind of made it more of a traditional sort of old school class, I guess. Yeah. Um, we all had to wear duck feet. We had one or two guys that had real big feet, like 15, 16s that, that were, had to wear the jet fins or whatever. But man, we, we, I, I just remember that how fast the duck feet really are when you get, when you get used to them, I liked them, Jeez, man, they're yeah. fast. Yeah. I liked them, but I will tell you this. Once I was done with buds, I did not use duck feet ever again. <laughs> no, no, no. Cause they're like, honestly too, like they're man, when you're fucking sore and tired, they're brutal. Like, you know, they're not easy to get on. Like yeah. they are fucking not. So yeah. anyways, um, yeah, like that's kind of been the evolution over time. And like, I don't, you know, I, I, I don't know that there's much more evolution that can happen. I, I certainly with footwear, but again, it's kind of that, you know, you can't make this really awesome running shoe and still make it a good military boot. Like true. I, I just, you know, like, I, mean, I, I guess, but that's the thing is like, you know, when I, when I, you know, you get through buzz and selection and you get to the units, you'll be state. Like guys don't wear those boots. Like, no, really. you're going to get issued 10 different yeah. pairs of boots that, or and 10 then you're like, better. yeah, yeah, and then you're like, well, I don't, and then you realize, like, oh, okay, it makes sense. Like, we needed a, they'd have to standardize a boot for training for safety. All like, it makes sense why you have to wear a boot in selection, of course. Sure, uh, sure. you get out and you're like, oh, this is there's better options, you know. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, that's for sure. Um, what one thing is the, uh, you know, like you said, you know, you know, the evolution it's turning into a running shoe, you know, yeah. versus a boot, you know, it is, yeah. it still has some stability in it, but at the same time, it is so light, so forgiving. Um, you know, it, it's got to be better, you yeah. know, compared to what the old one was. Um, yeah. but I think, you know, those I old think ones that... last, those old ones last, I had yeah. a pair of, uh, jungle boots for over 20 years. Yeah, Before. that's the one thing I wish I had kept, man. Like, I, I think, and that, and I guess I didn't realize how this thing is. When I went to Buds, I didn't realize, like, you know, I put the baits on, I go out, you know, you start going, like, week after week. Like, I can no shit. Like, I, you'd go through a pair of bait shoes, boots, like, no kidding, in three weeks. Yeah. Like, you would wear them down to, like, there's no soul. And I, I just makes you realize, like, how much of, like, the foot shuffle and, like, how 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 much the sand is cor corrosive and stuff yeah, and it's like it's true but like i went through you know four or five pairs of baits and buds and i only went through one pair of jungle boots i didn't even wear them out you know i broke them in but anyways yeah, yeah like i think that's the big evolution you can't you can't have both you know i think they made a decent boot yeah i would agree i had to I had to turn in my uh jungle boots after hell week though because oh. of all the uh low crawling right the toes just Done. you know it, uh, i wouldn't have been able to 
shine through that. You know, it was just no almost the hole went through it. Cause yeah, yeah. you know, you, you bear, you do a lot of low crawling on concrete too. You know, that, that's, that's how I, Oh man. I remember <laughs> right. Like reminiscing a bit, like the demo pits, the most uncomfortable thing about all of that was the bear crawling. Like my knees at that point, you know, your knees are so swollen and yeah, that sucked. That like, yeah. cause it's like, you, there's no escape, but yeah. Yeah. The demo pits, the, the part for the demo pits for me was, um, there was no hiding my chafing, right? And I don't know what's in that nasty ass water that's in the demo pits. I mean, sewer from Tijuana. <laughs> I mean, yeah. it's disgusting. But but it's also all the chemicals from the smoke grenades going off. Oh, and, totally, yeah. And I was I was on fire. Um, but anyway, let's digress a little bit. So let's move up the body a little bit. Um, gone from what? footwear. Um. What, what, what do you want to say? Wetsuits is kind of like, I, I don't know exactly what wetsuit they're wearing. I just kind of want to throw that out there because like the wetsuit you guys are going to wear in selection in terms of quality, comfort, and fit, they're not supposed to be comfortable and fit really. Like when you get in the teams, you'll get amazing wetsuits. Yeah, and that's where you kind of, you'll, you'll experience, you guys will witness the evolution of wetsuits because you'll get like not a bad wetsuit. It's just, you're not going to get fitted to you. And then you're going to be like, okay, diving sucks. You'll go through second phase with a shitty wetsuit and you'll go to SQT with a better wetsuit probably. And then you get to yeah. the teams are like, oh my God. Like, yeah. yeah remember like the measurements totally they took? Oh man. Remember the measurement? It was like 80 different measurements on it was, your body. It was, a, it was an ordeal. It was a real ordeal, but yeah. like, I still have some of my wetsuits and they're yeah. like, yes, they're outdated, but I mean, I, and then I have my tri suit, my two times you tri suit, which is like, it's like a different, it's like a Ferrari, you know what I mean? Like if you watch, watch the NFL, watch the, if you watch the NFL winter games, like they're playing outside the winter, like at Lambeau, mm -hmm. most all quarterbacks in the NFL wear two times you wetsuits underneath their, underneath their uniforms when it's cold. Wow. Yeah. yeah. So we, that was one of the big things when I worked at two times you years ago, that was the big outside of selling to triathletes. Like if you run the Ironman, you're wearing a two times you wetsuit, the best in the world. Oh, sure. But like. You know, I had like Jared Goff, like a whole bunch of players that wore wetsuits, wore the huh. two times view wetsuit. And like, and I have one and I go, I get why it's sure. a different material I mean, it's super flexible, pliable, and it's, and it's breathable in some areas, believe it or not. Um, but yeah. you know, it's like not most people are going to spend $3,000 on a wetsuit though. So well, here, here, yeah, here's <laughs> a good piece of advice. When you do get fitted for your, uh, buds, um, wetsuit. Cause it's pretty much, you know, small, medium, large, and you know, yep. they're, they're going to give it to you, but try them on before you go, you leave the, where they're issuing and just make sure it actually fits you because there's some issues with constriction up here. Like if you yeah. can't do this with your wetsuit and if you do this next thing, you know, you're like choking you, yourself out. Yeah. You're like, can't breathe or you feel the blood flows all, all of a sudden like getting constricted yeah that is a precursor especially with the cold water and all the swimming that you're going to be doing in them is for that uh site um you know thing i know we've done a show on site but that that was a really good thing that you brought up that last uh time we talked about swimmer induced pulmonary edema um that is something that can really screw you up at buds and it's it's a downhill slope for yeah you know, once you get that it turns into pneumonia and then it turns into a heat casualty then it turns into rhabdo i mean it is it's not beginning of the end it yeah. is a horrible journey um once you get that so if you can avoid the site that is very important you bet yeah yeah so i i think you know like we could go into goggles and things like that but that's more of a you know, not goggles and masks haven't changed really at all. I mean, they've the shape they've shaped a little better glass, a little more non non mirrored finishes and things like that. But goggles, goggles, goggle. In that sense. Yeah, I think they issue decor masks at Buds. You know, it's got yeah. two glasses and a nose. Yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> so it you know it covers your your whole face right here. You know, I, you know you won't ever use goggles at Buds. You'll either use a mask or no mask. Right. Yeah, that that is so that is something that, yes, you, you know, unfortunately, you need to train how to be a mouth breather when you are swimming. And that's yep. not really a whole lot of fun. <laughs> um, <laughs> no. But uh, 
um, that's just the way it is, you know. So having a mask prior to your training is actually a smart recommendation, I would yep. say. Yeah, experience that before. It's like again, we we do the same thing. Like we don't we don't train in masks uh, when we swim, but it's one of those things that once you can acquire a good breathing pattern without a mask, it's it's nice to put the mask on and learn how to mouth breathe without <gasps> creating stress. Yep. And yeah. so that's like the big thing is learning. That's one of the first things we do is a lot of people just don't know that they're even breathing funny, you know? So yeah, that's been, you know, the, the bat, the, definitely the mask has been improved over the time, a little more streamlined, but as far as the gear outside of that, you know, like there's been changes in knives and whatnot, but I, I think that what's really like the next sort of topic I think we'll talk about in the future is like the evolution of like the evolution of dietetics and training, right? How, how does that look different for us? You know, like how, as we, as consumers, how we've changed our eating, but also the availability of things like in nutrients, you know, so maybe that's, that's the evolution of that too, is, is a good topic to have. Yeah. But, that'd be a good one for next time we're on for sure. Yep. Uh, Cause not only have, you know, my eating habits changed because of the different options that are available, but my eating habits have changed because I am older. Yep. as well i'm not necessarily trying to put on weight anymore right, right I'm, same. yeah I'm trying to yeah. do just the opposite you know just you know have to you know no longer out working my diet i actually have to uh you know work out in you know yes not, yeah, yeah. Wa like watch my I, portion control yeah <laughs> that is it's a real thing you know and i think but but i think that also goes to evolution of training too is that is you know there is there has to be an emotional state in which you have to realize that like, it's like you just said, like that former football player gets done playing. We well, probably shouldn't be eating in the same way that he, he did in the past. Cause the way he was training, the way he was consuming calories just change and like life goals should change too. And just, and I think eating is habitual, right? Sure. We may totally think I'm going to change the way I'm training and we do but we forget the change that we, the way we eat as well, because that training and goals. And before you know, like, wait, wait, it's like six months later, you put on this weight and you're like, Oh, I didn't change the way I was. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. Eventually you can't eat like you're a hard gainer. Um, no, no, all no, your no, life, because is, eventually is, one day you're going to be a hard loser. That's it. Right? Yeah. Yeah. No, I was, that is a hundred percent happening. Like, <laughs> but like, but I kind of like it though. Like I also, I don't have to train quite as hard no. to yield the, the, the same result that I would have to train so much harder when I was younger. That is true. That's that kind of cool, you know? Yeah. So, and that's, and I think again, it goes, it goes along with the training stuff. We, and that's what we found out is like, the, it is the cliche train smarter, not harder. And that's what we're looking at is like, you're seeing better training equipment get into actual selection. Oh yeah. And, it's like we can out you're starting to actually get to see the stuff we can train and practice with no kidding i get a use that in selection because like you said you couldn't find duck feet back then yeah right? that that in of itself is the evolution is all these candidates can get all this stuff before they oh, even see yeah. it <clears throat> yeah in fact there's a there's a website i follow that um or i think they have a social media and i'm I'm skipping it. I'll, what I'll do is once I remember it, I'll put it in the description of this uh, video. Um, but they sell all of the equipment needed for whatever pipeline you are seeking, which I thought was kind of a great idea. You know, it's it's everything. It's from a real like, thing, man. Yeah, like the, you and I live it. The Air Force issue gear, the Navy SEAL issue gear, you know, the Ranger issue gear, you know, whatever that is, they they have access to those you know, that equipment, which, um, yeah. you know, it's not cheap, but, um, you know, it is, it is an option to your training to eventually, right. you know, have that extra gear. And then here's something that's kind of cool. That's not a horrible thing to do. It's borderline, I guess. Um, you know, if you actually have been training in the same boots that you are issued, um, you know, you will actually beat them up and you know, have a good worn out pair of shoe boots before you go. And if you need a new one, you can go turn those in yep. and get a new pair. You know? Yeah. Yeah. So, that's exactly what I did. When I, when I checked in the buds, I got issued a pair and I bought a pair. Yeah. And then yeah. I just, 
then from then on, it's like, recycled itself. It's constantly, it just recycled yeah. itself. Cause it's like, at that point you're like, you're still trying to kind of do things your own and you're not, you, you still haven't been used to like the amount of gear gets issued to you when you start six, when you're successfully navigating the pipeline of buds, mm. the amount of gear you get issued is like not exaggerating folks. When I got issued my SQT gear, like I had a Toyota Tacoma, I had, I filled the bed up twice Damn. and the cab just to drive it to my apartment in San Diego, like filled it up. And that yeah. was my initial loadout. And so that's like a small loadout <clears throat> compared to what you're getting at the teams. But so just, yeah. yeah I, I had a condo and I had a, you know, one of the great room condos where you have a living room and dining room, kitchen yep. kind of combo in it. Fill up it. that that whole thing just spread out. So we, to... I had two roommates, two or three of us in a <laughs> condo in La Jolla, and we we all got issued at the same time. And it was like it was like a Friday, right? And it, so, no kidding, like a storm came into San Diego. So I don't even mention this. My buddy and I put our wet got our wetsuits on, right? We went to La Jolla Cove. Okay. And the surf was huge, and I like had the big flags out, known in. And my buddy was like screw it let's go man we went out to La Jolla Cove man and the lifeguards started like coming out to get us and they wouldn't they turned around there too it was huge sir like it was black I was like it was now looking back I was like that was stupid but we <laughs> fully went into the, like the storm man and we were body surfing like huge well swells but that was like part of the gear shoot because you get all the stuff and you're like you like feel like a navy seal finally and you're putting everything yeah. on and trying it, and you're like I got my wetsuit on like let's go use it you know yeah that was our that was my time yeah yeah so. the gears gears just gonna keep getting better i mean not just yeah. only the gear that you use to train in but the gear that you use to operate in is yeah yeah like it's awesome it, it's a whole different two different levels of generations that you know from what we had you know it's just exactly they, yeah, from yeah. the optics to you know you name it it's really yep. awesome yeah well, all right again, man. here's the idea guys if you guys have anyone listening that's like has has other gear ideas gear lists stuff to go over and give us our thoughts we'll do that too i mean really you guys drive the content what we do yeah. is we come up with questions that these topics kind of come from questions that get come to us via email so you yeah. guys drive the questions we'll get to it yeah you guys check out performancefirstus.com you get see what jeff's doing over there my side is stusmithfitness.com you know Pick your poison. You know. can't go wrong with you. Get this. So just, just to be on the record, right? It's like, which one do I use? It don't you know, matter. It doesn't matter. Just you know, find it. You know, find out what works for you. I, I tell people all the time, I have a way to train, not the only way to train. And it's a big world out there. You know, some people might need, you know, a different version of training. And my recommendation for anybody, no matter what, you know, journey you are on, is try several options just so you can find out what actually works for you. You know, and you may need a different cycle that focuses on something else that, you know, whatever. Um, and that's so, yeah. the evolution of training guys. Like yeah. that, that really is like, there is something to be said about you as a, you as a, an athlete choosing a coach that seems to speak to you like that though there's a programming or the way they are like go with yeah. it man. i'm like yeah. yeah that's this is your choice man like in like that's what Stu and i said like we do the same you'll get to the same end state there you go all right, all right. So. oops until next time um we will do this again jeff thanks so much for your time and um you know uh, look forward to the next one you bet Stu. thanks